I just realized we have two roosters. How in the tarnation did I not figure that out? There's more baby goats. There's more, more baby ba goats. More baby goats. I went there to feed the chickens and I couldn't find them and I saw baby goats. There's two, there's two, there's two. Oh my goodness, the most adorable. She is minutes old. She's still, she's not actually drying out a little bit. Now let's check on this one. See? She's even Okay, we got two babies. We got three. I knew she had three. We need to leave her alone. Look, You're a good mama, aren't you? You said there was going to be three of them. I knew. She her. was so big. Okay, no other babies around here. Okay, now what's really important is that we make sure these babies stay alive. So we need to... Bring a flake of hay. She may have another baby in her. Matter of fact, I think she does. Cream Puff, my little buddy that follows me around. I knew she had a few babies in there. She's got three. And I'm just gonna leave them alone. Our water bowl's working perfectly. So the goat barn's done. Actually, Cream Puff used the goat barn to have her babies in. Ellie used the chicken coop. Uh, because Cedar's gone, I've been handling family stuff, taking kids all over the place, so I haven't even worked out here that much. Um, but they did their thing. So my plan is to, be, I, I thought I had a couple more weeks. My plan was to build partitions so we could have, I keep hearing that little baby coughing. I don't like that. But all of a sudden we have two girls, two boys. The weather's good. They usually wait for a storm to roll in, but apparently they uh, were overdue. Our mom is gone this weekend, so we talked her dad into taking us to the hot springs. Party time! We're gonna go give you guys a tour of the other pool. Okay. We're in the other pool right now. Hi! Say hi. When we first got in here, it was really warm, but 
Be careful. So we bought her grandmother probably uh, two years ago, and uh, she died a couple years ago, but this is her baby who was born here. So now this is the second generation born here. And this is a mil another milk goat breed. They're a taller uh, goat, um, and she always seems to have just one kid. So anyway, we're excited. And she is a uh, pulled goat, so she doesn't ever have horns. So I don't think this baby's gonna have horns either. But another female so far, we've got two females and two males. <laughs> Might as well grab the third one. This is three that Cream Puff had yesterday, almost exactly the same time. I think her name's Elsa or something, I don't know what the kids call her. And uh, two boys and a girl. So this is the girl that Cream Puff had. Um, she always has the smallest little babies, but she always has at least two. She had three this time. I knew she was huge. Um, we will keep this one. They are bred. All of our goats were bred with a Kiko buck that belonged to our friends, Mark and Ola. We've got two more that could kid any second. So now that these guys are a little bit established and they're doing okay, they went through their first night without any problems. I'm probably going to pull the gates off the front of this. Um, someone asked on Instagram why do I don't put a heat lamp out here and the answer is they don't need it. Um, matter of fact, this is pretty mild compared to the climate that they usually kid in. What we have learned over the last few years that is so vital to the process, ironically, is that babies just need to nurse and nurse right away. I'm more concerned about how the other does treat these kids than anything else because they naturally pick on cream puff. They're oftentimes... They'll, they'll pick on their kids as well. I said this on Instagram and I stand by it. If you don't like baby goats, we cannot be friends. I've told this story before, but I remember coming home from school one day, finding one of my goats not acting her normal way, and my dad said that she was more than likely pregnant. So I called my dad out at the high school at his job and asked him what to do, and he told me to get a chair, sit down, and watch. My dad was very practical when it came to that stuff. He taught biology and human anatomy for 40 years. And as kids, the things that me and my brothers thought were slightly inappropriate, maybe even funny, were commonplace to my dad. They were things that just happened around the farm. Animals having babies was one of them.
I'm personally not aware of a better way that a child can grow up than the farm and ranch life. If you think about the expectations and the responsibilities that naturally have to happen when you're born into one of those families, it's a lifestyle, often a multi-generational lifestyle. Not only do you get to watch dad and how dad works, but you might even get to watch grandpa. And those influences on a child growing up create character in a very special way. With that farming and ranching lifestyle, you live up close and personal with life and death every single day. I don't know why they do that, but there's two aggressive goats that we have that I think we'll get rid of. They're still great milk goats, but they seem to be the two that are just always kind of stern enough. And this is an opportunity for us to handpick um, the ones that we want to keep. So I'm going to let them nurse for a minute and then I'll push them back in this little room in here and uh, give them some more hay. And there's always a concern with triplets. Goats have the ability to produce plenty of milk for two babies. But that third baby is always questionable. So I'm just going to keep the feet in front of her. You take, good golly. You call, you call for your boyfriend? Apparently she's uh, threatened by me and she called for her boyfriend to come take care of her. This barred rock, we love him. He's very kind and, and he's not an aggressive rooster, but he's got to be at least six years old. So I don't know how much longer he's going to be around. All that I ever wanted to do was work alongside my dad, maybe even my brothers, on our family ranch. The problem is there's very little money in ranching anymore. And while we call our place Red Poppy Ranch, I'm fully aware it's a name. We're not ranching anything around here other than maybe kids and cats. But this is probably as close as I'm ever going to get to a dream. I'm not prepared to borrow five to 10, maybe even $15 million to make 50 grand a year just to say I'm a rancher. But I do believe if we're not careful, we may all be farming and ranching in our front yards very, very, very soon. It is very obvious that things are changing and I've never felt more inclined to have a garden and animals that could feed my family than I do right now. If you happen to be one of those farmers or ranchers that's providing my family with food or clothes, God bless you and thank you for doing what you do. As far as our little ranch is concerned, it is made up of a whole bunch of goats, a whole bunch of chickens, and all of those animals need to be fed. As the kids are in school right now, most of the time, either I feed or Cedar feeds first thing in the morning. Because I'm always out here working or doing something, this isn't that hard. But on the weekends, the kids have responsibilities around stacking firewood, around gathering eggs, and just being up close and personal with our lifestyle, and ultimately, again, where our food comes from. It's as simple as our kids gathering eggs, bringing those eggs into the kitchen, making German pancakes with those eggs, 
than eating said German pancakes and recognizing the food in your belly and the process in which it got there. It's a simple yet powerful understanding that many of us have lost touch with, to our detriment. A traditional homestead, meaning a piece of land that was offered for free if it was improved upon per the Homestead Act, a traditional homestead would have enough land to farm. You would also want a woodlot. You would also hope for a meadow where you could cut hay for all of the animals that would be required for the lifestyle. The idea was that you would have everything that you would need to survive within walking distance. Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman appointed to the Supreme Court, was raised on a ranch called the Lazy Bee. If I recall correctly, the Lazy Bee was one of the largest, if not the largest, ranches in the Southwest. Again, if I recall correctly, the ranch fell between Arizona and New Mexico. The first time I read that book was about eight or nine years ago, and listening to how she grew up helped me realize why she ended up doing all of the things that she did. She watched her dad and her grandfather do whatever it took to survive on a ranch in the Southwest. She told a story about her dad making a race for a bearing with a piece of bread dough. Unfortunately, it's not quite possible that we can all grow up that way in this day and age, but I do believe there's an opportunity for us to take some responsibility around the food that we eat. It's not that hard to put in a garden or garden boxes. It's not that hard to compost the grass that you cut in the front yard to use in the garden boxes. It's not that hard to plant a few fruit trees. It's not that hard to have a few chickens. A traditional homestead often was and could be completely self-sufficient, even independent from society's needs, and that was standard. That was to be expected in order to survive. And by the way, that wasn't that long ago. My great-great-grandparents settled in southeastern Idaho about 150 years ago on land from the Homestead Act. The moral of the story is that the skills that my grandparents, great-grandparents, even great-great-grandparents developed surviving in many ways may be required to continue to survive. The problem is I don't know everything my great-great-grandparents knew, but I'm willing to learn, that's for sure. It is all done. I need to build a door, need to install the lights. I think I've got one, maybe two more uh, goats about to have a baby and I really think I'm messing things up by being out here. 
I'm going to uh, go inside and check on Callie and Reed, make sure they're okay, um, get them fed, and I'm going to come out and check on these goats. Um, I went ahead and pulled the gate off the front so all of the goats can go in and out of here, and they're just going to have to figure this thing out because I can't, uh, I can't isolate all of them individually while they're having babies. So, so hopefully these new mamas protect their little babies, but... Uh, Anyway, I love it. Uh, couldn't have turned out any better. Um, I've had this metal sign hanging in my shop for the last probably year and a half or so. And uh, somebody made this for me and sent it to us. And I've always loved it. Um, and I had the thought this would be a perfect spot to hang it. I can't think of a better spot to put that. Our next video is going to be all about this back window. Um, getting that back window finished in the chicken coop, getting all the siding finished. Um, and the excavator is due to show up in about 48 hours. So hopefully we can uh, start talking about that. But uh, finish the chicken coop, get the siding finished up, and then we're done out here. And I think I'm gonna tear the porch off the front of the house and get that done before all the snow's gone. We don't have any snow in the forecast. You know, we may be done with winter. It's warming up awful fast. All the, uh, the creeks are starting to run. All the water's starting to run everywhere. The road is just as nasty as it can be, but another week of sun and it'll it'll be tolerable so anyway see you in a few days Ah, ah.